Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Allison. I'm manager of Hercules and Crockett Libraries, and I'm so excited to join you today. I am joined with my coworker, Robin. Hello. And then Felipe, who is our seed baller, which we're going to talk about a little bit more in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, I, we're excited to have you. If you haven't already, we have some seed baller starter sample packs at Crockett and Hercules Library. You can come by and get some. Um, and we can also send them to a different library if you need them there. So you can always email or call Hercules Library and we'll get them sent wherever you need. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Robin, who's going to talk a little bit about our seed library. Yeah, so if you've been to the Hercules Library recently, you might have noticed our cute little card catalog sitting in the front of the lobby, um, and that is our new seed library. So our goal is to have seeds for um, all of you to take home to be able to start your own gardens um, or add to an existing garden, and it will be a kind of seasonal offerings. Um, they are, uh, it has been very, very popular, so um, uh, we put the seeds out and they get taken very quickly. So we ask that you keep coming back and keep trying <laughs> um, if, if they're out when you're, when you're here. Um, and I'm going to put a link in the chat to our seed library webpage. We're not the only library that has a seed library. Many of our other branches in Contra Costa County also have seed libraries and they're all um, just a little bit different. So it's fun to kind of go around and see what everyone has to offer. Oops, I think I sent that just to Allison. Send that again. Um, there we go. Um, and yeah, you can, and we also have um, displays, books about gardening and handouts, information about uh, community events around gardening, gardening clubs, free compost, and uh, kind of information about how to start a garden. So we've got all that here at the Hercules Library and on um, many of our other branches as well. Uh, come check it out. Uh, feel free to email or call us if you have questions about it. And I think that's it about our seed library. Thank you. Um, so we're going to get started on what you guys came for and talk about the seed baller and the seed bombs. Um, Felipe, I'm going to show the video. Would you like to introduce it before I do that? Uh, yeah, well, the video is uh, just a basics on how um, you can make your own seed, seed bombs at home. They're also called seed balls. Um, we often interchange the, the way we uh, refer to it. We're still we're still a new company and we're playing with uh, the terms to see what people like better or feel more connected to. So please, if you guys have feedback, I'd love to hear it from you guys. But yeah, the, the video basically is a DIY seed ball making video so that if you're interested in this kind of um, gardening um, manner, um, you can make it yourself and uh, you know they make great gifts and they make great ways for how you can effectively uh, plant at home and uh, increase your germination rate because planting from seed can be challenging and um, success rate you know is not so great sometimes and also it's just a funner way it's, it's a more fun way to to garden so yeah it's just a short video on how you can make your own seed bombs so yeah Perfect, thank you. So I'm gonna share that and then we will come back and talk some more. One second. Um, dry clay, this is, what we are, this is what we are using here. It is just a health and beauty Aztec secret. It is literally just a dry clay. We got it from Whole Foods, it was about 10 bucks. So this huge jar is gonna make a ton of it. And also you can obviously make a facial clay mask as well uh, as an added bonus. But this is what we're gonna be using today for our the, the clay base on the seed bombs. So we have our uh, cup of five teaspoons of bentonite clay. Put that right in there. Then you have five teaspoons of your, uh, your worm castings or compost or anything that really is going to work. You just need a, you just need a organic soil base to um, add to the clay because if you just made a clay ball and added seeds, the clay would never break up. And uh, see, so we actually have a demo here. This demo seed ball, um, it, uh, it's, it's very pliable, which is what you want, but you don't want it to be, uh, see like it just kind of comes apart, which is what you want too, because when it dries, you want it to be kind of crumbly. So when it gets wet from the rain, um, it's going to just kind of deteriorate and the seeds are gonna fall out and the, the 
soil that you have in here is going to feed those seeds to begin with and they're going to grow naturally uh, in that environment. So now all we're going to do is since we have our ingredients here, we're going to um, just kind of mix up our seeds too. You need, um, you need about five parts of this to one part of seeds. So, um, you know, just a, a fair amount of seeds are gonna work. Um, I really am not counting. It doesn't have to be too particular, but for the best results, they recommend a five to one. So I'm just gonna empty this seed packet into our mixture here. And then we have some, some of our or ornamental sunflowers. Put those in there. And then all we're going to do is just add our water until it becomes like a paste. And uh, well, not really a paste, more like a tacky ball-like substance. And we'll get there eventually. You don't want to add it all at once. Do not add all the water at once because if you add too much water, it's going to be one of those things where you add a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, and it, you're going to make a mistake that way. So what I find the best way to fix this problem or to, to uh, prevent this problem is to, um, is to just mix as you go until you have the right consistency. All right. I'm going to move this and just use this because that's kind of bouncing there for a second. Oh, and also, just as a little reminder, you are going to want some wax paper. We just have wax paper. It's not a necessity, but um, you're going to want to have it just so, you're, just so you can um, put your seed bombs on there to dry because they do need to dry for a couple days. And so now that you've got your hands all dirty, um, literally, we just take, once you mix them up, you get the... the the mixture going it just really starts turning kind of tacky on you then you gotta you kind of got this ball it's just like you know it looks a lot like clay that you'd see but it, other than the fact that uh, it's kind of clumpy and uh, that's because it has the soil in there or the compost or whatever you're using then all you do since it already has the seeds embedded in this mixture here you just take a little clump you know whatever size you want if you want them to be an atom bomb just keep this whole thing you know that's that's your big seed bomb um, <laughs> or if you actually want to use your, uh, your seed bombs wisely, you know, conserve ammo, um, you can make, you know, you got big seed bombs, small seed bombs. All you have to do is literally just roll this together and um, they don't need to obviously be perfectly circular. I, I don't think I'm, mine are perfect by any means, but they're, they're pretty, uh, pretty round. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can just make them any size you want. And obviously, um, you want to make a, a fair amount here because you're not just going to wage war on one part of the lawn. You got to launch. You got to launch an all-out uh, ground force attack on that on that uh, lawn there. So, by all means, by all means, uh, go a little bit overboard on the amount that you're going to have because if you're going to beautify anything worth doing, is worth overdoing, right? Fantastic. So now that we've seen a little bit about how to make them, let's talk about, you know, what you do with them, how you came into the idea of seed bombs, all that good stuff. So um, tell us how, how this idea came about and what you hope to accomplish with them. Yeah, you know, seed bombs actually weren't, it's not my idea. Um, it's actually a pretty ancient technology. Um, the first people documented to use seed bombs are actually the Egyptians. And how they came about that is they actually saw that when the monkeys would eat the fruits and then they would come out the other end, <clears throat> it came out in these little round balls. And they found that it had a pretty high success rate for germination. So the way they started gardening was actually using these uh, like compost, uh, balls of manure and then they mix they would mix them with seeds and that's how they would uh, do their gardening back in, in the Egyptian days and they found a lot of success doing that and it makes a lot of sense because um, one of the problems seeds run to run into when they're trying to germinate is that when we put them in the soil they often get eaten by birds you know it's birds that's how that's a lot of their food is they're just they're just flying around eating seeds and um, the seed ball is, it serves as a protection for the seed to allow it 
to even have a chance to start germinating and uh, you know protection from insects and birds. So that's one of the main functions of seed bombs. And the other is that we really try to give um, all the nutrients the seed needs to uh, thrive and to germinate. So it, it's really like a perfect little cradle of protection and uh, nutrition for the seed. Um, but yeah, once I heard about that concept and that technology way of planting, it just, it just made sense for me to um, kind of <laughs> make a, a project around this. And it's also just so much cooler to have like this little ball that you see and then it just blows up with all these different seedlings. Um, and it, I, th I just thought it was such a cool looking thing. Um, I remember I saw it on a time lapse and I was like, that's, that's the most, that's awesome. I wanna, you know, I wanna do this, I wanna learn about it. I want to uh, make them. So that's kind of how I got started with seed bombs. Thank you. And they're so wonderful. I know we're using them for children, for adults and things. Um, and as we saw in the video, you're making them at, or you're making them. Um, one of the questions, one of our, in the chat says, can I use the clay soil for my backyard? Is this something that we can do with our backyard materials or would you recommend, you know, like in the video using worm castings and things? Um, can you use, you, the question is, can you use clay from your backyard? Yes. Clay soil from the backyard. Um, I, I'm not, I mean, clay comes in a lot of different varieties. Um, all that's important is that the clay is a substance to kind of uh, hold the seed ball together. If the clay from your soil is able to do that, then absolutely you can. Um, the clay doesn't really serve any other purpose rather than causing the seed ball to dry and become the protection that the seeds need. So you can play with it. And if it works, yeah. Um, I, in the video, shows them using the Aztec clay um, that people also use for, um, I know my sister does, she puts apple cider vinegar and uses it on her face. And it, you know, causes this little fun thing that I've tried it before. Uh, we put that in the video because that's really accessible for a lot of people to get. You can get it at any grocery stores. Um, when we mass produce it, we, uh, I use red clay from, um, there's a clay store in Richmond. It's called um, the Clay People. And they have a bunch of awesome diff like products for, you know, from clay and from different tools to, to use for people that are interested in pottery. But that's where we get our clay from. Um, but really, it's just clay. Clay is clay. So as long as it works for you, then absolutely yes. Thank you. Um, and I do, um, Robin pop this in the chat, but if you guys have questions out there, feel free to put them in the chat and we will pass them along. Um, one of my questions for you again, do you, who do you envision these for? Are they, you know, for beginner gardeners? For are we throwing them out into our entire garden and that's how we garden? Are they for children? What What's your idea of the best way to use them? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's really for anybody. There's there's a few different layers that I can see the, um, something like a seed bomb being very beneficial for. Uh, for one, I think it's a great introduction for kids into gardening. Um, just because, like I said, it's a fun way to garden. It's something that you can see and imagine it growing to like a plant. Whereas um, with seeds, you know, depending on the kind of seeds, it's, it's, it's just, it's more challenging to visualize that for, for children. So <clears throat> they're great for children and it's a fun way for you to plant with them and then water them and watch them grow together. Um, and then also for mass projects where like um, we're trying to actually reforest a large area where they're, they're um, spread out in mass. Um, and this has been done in many places around the world, including, um, you know, reforestation projects in South America and in uh, Africa and also uh, reforestation for like food forests where um, what they'll do is they'll fly a plane and then they'll drop like thousands and thousands of seed bombs with uh, different types of fruits um, that are local to the area, of course, and it just create these uh, massive food forests that help the local ecosystem and even people, you know, it's awesome to have fruit trees. So you know, we all enjoy having fruit trees. So it, there's very different layers, you know, from children using seed bombs for fun and for it's a more uh, manageable and uh, successful rate of plant, uh, germination to you know mass projects that are affecting the uh, eco are benefiting the ecosystem and restoring the ecosystem. Okay. 
And I think one of the questions that I had when I first saw them was, is it really just as simple as just throw them out into your garden or into a pot or a green space? Do you need to dig a hole? Do you need to cover them? How, how is the best way? That's a good question because um, see, seeds will need water to um, germinate. You can't just throw out a seed bomb and expect it to you know, grow without any kind of water. It's essential for life. So if you're throwing it out and there's not going to be any rain for a while, then it's not going to grow. But the thing about the seed bomb is that it's going to protect the seed until next season uh, or next, you know, the next bout of rain. So yeah, you can just throw it, but then you probably won't see anything for a couple seasons. If it's not, if you're not getting a uh, natural heavy rain. Uh, so if you're planting it, you want to watch it grow. The best thing to do at, for that season is to water it two to three times a week. I think it would really appreciate it. Um, one at minimum. And you really have to, break because the seed bomb it's a hard little ball and you want to have it start break down so you need a lot of water to kind of loosen the clay and the soil so that the seed can uh, absorb the nutrients and um and can grow or else it's too hard for it to even begin to grow okay so you want it to add enough water so that it's supple you know and it starts breaking down that makes sense yeah we're looking forward to getting some of them started um in your estimation, because I know you've been working with these for a while, how long does it take before it does germinate and the flowers start to pop out? Or at least the seedling? It depends. Um, different varieties are different. Every seed bomb is different too. But um, you can expect a week if it's, like a, if it's getting the proper water and sun and temperature. Um, a lot of seeds, they wait until the environment is at a certain temperature at a, like a, consistently at that temperature because then it knows it's time to wake up. So now is actually a great time to start planting them and watering them because uh, now is spring. Uh, so there's still some time. Uh, I think it starts, best time starts from mid-February, depending where you are, of course, um, from mid-February to May would be you know, a great time. For California, where we are right now, it's been a li little cold recently, but now is a, is a great time to plant the wildflowers. And we have more rain coming, so even better. That's right. Yeah. Um, you guys, if again, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat, raise your hand and I can unmute you. Um, one of the other questions I had, I know they're, they're beneficial. So we have different seed packs. The ones we have here at the library for our starters are poppies and I think pollinators. Um, what other kind of seed bomb packages do you make? We also have the wildflower ones too. Oh, thank you. We have wildflowers. That's right. Um, so right now we uh, have five products. We have the uh, Moringa, which uh, the Moringa is um, a, actually, actually a tree from, it's native from North India. And it's, it's one big seed. So each seed bomb that comes with one seed inside. And the Moringa, it's a superfood. The, the leaves are um, used to add to your tea or to uh, like shakes, nutrition shakes. And they're very rich in vitamin A, vitamin C um, and iron. <clears throat> And um, the, the seeds are also used to purify water. So it cleans um, water. It's really like a miracle tree. And um, I, found, I came into it when I was looking at trees that were very effective at filtering carbon from the air. And that's how I came about the Moringa. So it's one of my favorite all-time plants. So we had to add that to our product line. So the Moringa is one of the seed bombs, seed bombs we have. And then we have uh, California poppies because those grow really well in California and they're beautiful. Um, we have, and then we have a, a three different um, combination of wildflowers. We have a wildflower bouquet, which is um, a combination of, I think, zinnia and cosmos, and they're very colorful, and they have like all these, amount, all these different kind of colors. And then we have pollinator pals, which I think are 17. We have 17 seeds in that one. Um, it's all on the website. I have to uh, check. Um, but I think the pollinator pals has 17 different seeds and they're all very bee friendly uh, wildflowers uh, native to the area that different pollinators really love and they're very attracted to. And um, another one that we have is called the hummingbird and butterfly and they are two flowers that hummingbird and butterflies really love and they're like these bluish flowers. Um, that one's also really popular and I, I love that one myself. And uh, yeah, I think uh, that's it. Uh, we have catnip too. That's something we're experimenting with. A uh, catnip 
you have to be more careful with because it's from the mint family, so it can be invasive. So we recommend putting those in pots. Um, and we also were trying out the marigold this year. It's a new one, it's a new one that we're trying. So. Nice, nice. That sounds great. Robin, any questions from you or anybody out there? Feel free to jump in. Sure. Well, I was going to ask, um, we can go to your website and order um, seed balls on your website. And of course, we have free samples to give out at the library. Is there anywhere else um, people can find your um, seed balls in Crockett or Hercules or anywhere local? Um, you know, the flower, do you know the flower lady in Crockett that just moved downtown? Flowers Fresca or the? Um, she, or the it's the one that moved next to the bar. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. By the pet shop. She was above, uh, she was across the street from the, the cafe, but now she moved uh, downtown. So she carried some of my seed bombs. Um, I think she still has a few. And she said she wanted to pick some more up. So you could get it from her if you don't want to order it from the website. I have to check in with her. She's uh, gonna, I think, resupply soon. And then of course the Hercules Library. And are you guys carrying them at the Crockett Library? Yep, we have them at both libraries. You can come in and get them. Um, and again, if you're on this uh, webinar right now and you would like some, you can feel free to reach out to us at Hercules or Crockett Libraries and we'll send them to the closest Contra Costa County branch to you. We are just excited to get them out there and enjoy having them around. Yeah, we've got another question um, coming through from the chat and someone wants to know what's the best place to plant seed bombs? Um, I find the most success in a place that gets um, partial sun and partial shade. It's going to depend on, of course, what seed um, you're really trying to plant. But for the, for the ones that we have, they have most success where they get a partial sun and day, and they get a little bit of rest maybe in the morning or the evening um, from the sun. Um, now, of course, that's just the wildflowers that we have. Uh, some seeds, that if you're trying the plants um, and you want to put them to your seed bomb, you really need to check um, the requirements for that seed as they may be different. Wonderful. And we are, um, when we have the seeds at the library here, we're putting instructions on the back so you can see, you know, how long to germinate, how much sun and all that they need. So we are providing that. We also again have all the books here that you can check out to look into seed balls and other things. I really want to find a book now that shares the story about the Egyptians and the monkey because I'm not going to get that image out of my head for a while. That was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I know, so I've seen um, that you have some seed balls that are different colors. Is that just for fun? Does that do anything? That was like more for like the kids. Um, so yeah, we had a, a big order for um, seed balls to color them. And um, we do that. We color them sometimes to, you know, for like companies, they give them away as gifts and things like that. And they uh, request them for large orders. And, and we do that as well. And the coloring is all like very safe organic. It's really um, what it is, is a mineral that it's heated uh, to different temperatures cause the colors to change. It's really actually kind of fascinating, but it's really just basic minerals that you find in soil. And it's like, uh, it's all, it's food safe, it's organic and it just, it's compostable. Okay, sounds good. Um, so, and we do take uh, custom orders. Like I said, if for big orders, um, if people want a specific kind of seed or you know, if they want them certain colors, for bigger orders, um, we, we work with that. Okay. And we have um, all sorts of resources as well. We have our master gardener workshops that are coming up and they're gonna talk about doing your summer garden and they talk about flowers and things. So if you wanted to get started in this and you're watching, you can grab some seed balls from one of the libraries, throw them out there. And then we have all the resources to help you make your garden wonderful and fantastic year round. So um, I don't know if we have any other questions, but we appreciate you being here today, Felipe, and we'll be in touch because we're going to keep getting some seeds for these libraries and making sure people have them. Um, any other yeah. final thoughts or anything? Um, no, not, not on my end. Just thank you for being here, everybody, and listening. Yeah, thank you. Okay, everyone, you guys have a good evening. Happy gardening. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.